photos and music and footage, um, things you can use in your edit, in your video, things you didn't make yourself. It's always best to make it yourself, to do it yourself. But some of us aren't, you know, aren't, aren't composers and don't make our own music. <laughs> some people do. Um, and sometimes, you know, you can't get to the Arctic and you still want a shot of the Arctic. What can you do? Well, as soon as you start thinking about using someone else's stuff, hopefully, we're all well-trained academics here or involved in higher education, we start thinking about copyright. And this is what we feel when we think about copyright. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I know. Oh, no, it's copyright. I'm really scared now. Um, what, what's copyright? What is copyright? What does it mean? What world are we entering in now? Yeah. It's, 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 it's protected by the law. Um, someone who, the person who made it owns it and you can't use it without their permission. Um, copyright is automatic. It's automatically applied in this country. And I think all over the world, I think every country probably has copyright laws. And uh, it's automatic. As soon as you create something, as long as, you're, as it's your own work, and it should be if you've created it, you have um, copyright over it. And in this country, generally, um, that copyright will last for 70 years after you've died. It's quite a long time. That's automatically added. Um, I'm not a copyright lawyer. <laughs> But in general, the basic rule is, don't get scared, the basic rule is, if someone else made it, they own it, and you can't use it, unless you get their permission. Or, or if it's creative commons. Yeah. Yay! Sometimes, people who are revolutionaries of the internet, <laughs> um, people who want to share, people who want everyone to... Uh, grow and learn together, sometimes they use copyright to make it open. They add an open license to their work. There are lots of different types of open licenses, but the most, one most commonly used, as far as I know, is called Creative Commons, um, which is what this CC here means. Um, and Creative Commons is about uh, sharing your work and using the work of others, sharing your learning, building together, and that's what the internet's all about, right? It makes what happens naturally on the internet happen within the legal frameworks of copyright, because it is a license, and you have the right to add it to your work. Um, we, at CADARN, we try and support this kind of open, openness. We would love it if you could make educational media and then make it open so that everyone else can see it and use it and share it. But I don't know if you're allowed. You have to investigate that and ask Bangor University, what's your policy on copyright? Can I? I think the university like, does advise that. I think they think it's Brilliant. I don't know. I don't know what Bangor University says. I don't know what Aberystwyth University says. What? Oh, no. Okay. Um, Well, this is some, this is, yeah, this is one thing about Creative Commons and about, you know, the world of openness. You have to, I'm going to say to you, you need to research it, you need to research it. You, you do need to be a bit of an investigator and, you know, take a responsibility for what you're finding and what you're using um, and what you do with your own work. You have to find out what's in your contract and what Bangor University says, I don't know. Um, and when you find something that's released in the, uh, to, to use, you need to look into it. So, there are various types of Creative Commons licenses. I would advise you to go to the Creative Commons website, which I'll share links with later on, and read about what all of these mean. Um, I can go through them briefly now if you want. Yeah? This is the most open and free of the licenses. Apart from that, which I'll talk about in a minute, this is Creative Commons Attribution. 
And what that means is the person who made, took the photo or made the piece of music, he's saying to everyone else in the world, in, on the internet, you can use it for free, but you have to attribute me. You have to say who I am, who I'm the creator. Credit me. That's what it means. So when you take it and you use it, you say, I took this piece of music from Joe Bloggs. And we'll talk about how you do that. So that's the, the easiest one. And I would say, try and use materials with this license on it. And try and ignore the rest, because the rest is just trouble. <laughs> This one here is attribution and share alike. Um, share alike means you have to release your work under the same license. And I think that means under the share alike license. Um, so that obviously limits what you can do with what you've created. <clears throat> this one needs no derivatives. That means you can't change it. You have to attribute and you can't change it. If you put a piece of music in your video that someone else created, that's changing it. So you can't do it. So I'm a bit dodgy about the non-derivatives one. I really don't know what they mean by changing it. <coughs> do, is it changing it if I take a photo and put it in my PowerPoint presentation? I'm not sure. It doesn't say. So I avoid it. That's easy. Non-commercial. Attribute and non-commercial. Is education non-commercial these days? I don't know. That's why I avoid it. <laughs> and this is non-commercial share alike. Non-commercial, no derivatives. You see how much more restrictive it gets as you go on down. That's why I like to just use this one. And you'll find that a lot of material is released under this one because if you're into openness, why would you bother with not being open, right? OK. Public domain. What does that mean? Does anyone know what public domain means? It's, it's out there, so you don't, there's no credit needed. It's just there, free to use. Yeah, so um, this um, often means that when something enters the public domain, it means its copyright has expired. So if it's something that was created 100 years ago, uh, uh, 200 years ago, um, there's no copyright connected to it because it's, it's elapsed, maybe. <laughs> the thing about that is, the thing about public domain because of copyright elapsing is, it's very complicated. It's different in every country. Age, the, 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 the time limit is different in every country. And when you make a digital copy of something, like so many museums are making digital archives now of their, of their collections, there's copyright attached to the digital copy. So if you want to use a picture of a Da Vinci picture, you don't have the right, necessarily, unless the museum has released their materials into the public domain. So lots of organizations, museums, libraries, the US government, the UK government, releases their materials into the public domain, officially says, we don't apply copyright to what we're releasing here, to our digital archive. But every place is different. So you have to do your research. You have to look for the copyright notice, uh, the media usage, usage right notice on the website. But take it from me, you can go to NASA and use their stuff. <laughs> you can use their stuff. If we have time afterwards, I'll show you a video made just with NASA footage. It's quite cool. There's so much stuff out there. There really is a load of stuff out there you can just take and use as long as you attribute unless it's in the public domain. If it's in the public domain, you don't have to attribute. You don't have to do anything. Just take it. As long as you're not defaming NASA. <laughs> NASA took this, dead bastards. Don't do that. <laughs> OK. Any questions? Has work can you be marked? If it's got a Creative Commons license on it, it usually will be marked. Every piece of everything you find, you have to do your research and find out where the license is. But they might well use this little um, button. Yeah. But I found some uh, music, actually, they did a change. But they didn't, I thought they didn't get the license or the permission from the owner. 
on the internet? Well, there's lots of music out there and lots of footage and photos out there that aren't released for free to use that you can still get. But if you use that, you're breaking copyright law. Oh, I see. So don't do it. Oh, so yeah. you must find the original one. Um, you know, uh, some music, the deep sound change, and then get the... Uh, what music was it? Was it something that's like a a popular music song that everyone knows, or was it? Traditional song, traditional. I, I'm not sure, but the, um, it's a long music. If they just get one section. No, you can't do that. Cannot do no, that. you can't oh. do that. So there's no, um, no law, it's under so much. That's dodgy. Time. Yeah, that's dodgy. That's dodgy. Don't do it. And what about Facebook? Because if they put it up on <laughs> Facebook, it's sort of in that. I mean, I thought there's some, <coughs> yeah. If you uploaded to Facebook, then Facebook owns the copyright. Yeah. OK, so, so this, is, this is getting into the realm of yeah, scary so copyright. Yeah. And that's why we're all scared of it, because there's so many different little bits and bobs and who has the right and the other. And what about if you're using it for education? Is it OK then? Oh, yeah, apparently it is OK, because it's for education. And that's why we don't want to do our head in with this stuff. That's why we want to use Creative Commons, because then we know. It's explicit. We know what's going on. As long as we do our research, we make sure that they have released. The person who made it does have the right release to release it, as far as you know. Okay? So, stuff that's on YouTube is put out there for everyone to watch. So, why can't everyone watch it? Weird copyright. <laughs> How many people can you show it to? You know, all of these different rules and stuff. I don't know. And I'm scared of it too, so I, try, I just want to avoid it. Does that make sense? No, yeah. It's OK, it's all for educational purposes. That's fine. <laughs> you can do anything. <laughs> um, let's just say what we're aiming to do now is if you make anything, a PowerPoint presentation, um, a video, a podcast, and you use something that's created by someone else, make sure it's, you have the right to use it. Make sure you have the right to use it. Okay. The easiest way to make sure you have the right to use it is to use something that's released under Creative Commons license. If it's under copyright, you could always ask for permission to use it. But do you want to go to that trouble? Do you want to, con co do you want to find out who the producer is, con connect to the with the producer, beg them to use it, and then store that permission? It's just a lot of trouble. You could do that. I've done that. People do give permission, but you have to gain that permission in writing. Okay. Right, where do you go to find stuff that's released under Creative Commons license? Um, anywhere, really. Anywhere where people can upload stuff, you can find stuff. Um, you can go to the Creative Commons website itself. It's got a page for searching for stuff, but it will just take you somewhere else. Google, you can go to Google. They've got a filter on Google to search for um, a Creative Commons um, materials. But Google, you know, just takes you, it doesn't take any responsibility for what you find. Well, you have to take responsibility. Vimeo, YouTube, Flickr. Vimeo, YouTube is, the, is video. Flickr is photos. Um, open clip art is, um, is just like little pieces of art. You have to be careful wherever you go. Everywhere does it differently, right? And we're gonna, I'm gonna, sh we're gonna go and, have we got enough time? We're gonna go and we're gonna find a photo on Flickr and we're going to investigate some of the difficulties, some of the things you have to be careful of. Just be aware that everywhere does it differently um, and you have to watch your back. So be very careful of places like Wikipedia Commons, Wikimedia Commons and the Internet Archive. These are guy, kind of, um, what would you call them? Dodgy. They're dodgy. Well, they're, they're making, they're like archives of the Internet in a way. Um, and it's like, do, do you know how Wikipedia works? Everyone can just write stuff there. It's like, it's like the knowledge, it's like mass knowledge, the knowledge of the masses. And it kind of works because if someone writes something that's rubbish, someone else will come along and say, that's rubbish. And 
And someone else will say, yeah, I agree, that's rubbish, so we're going to edit it together and make sure it's not rubbish. Um, but there are no gatekeepers. Anyone can put anything up there, and there are really no gatekeepers apart from the people of the internet. Yeah, and the internet is wide and deep. <laughs> so just be careful, and this too. I found a, a film on there that was released into the public domain, and it wasn't. I had to connect, I had to contact the um, producer to use stuff, and they said, no, it's not, it's not public domain. What, why is it on the internet archive? Whoops, you see, things like that happen. Right, um, would you like to go and find um, something? Yeah, should we go to Flickr? So www.flickr.com. Go on to, yeah, whatever. We should be starting at 1.30. Yeah. Are we all on Flickr? Oh, um, yeah, but if we just go to Flickr, um, so if you, if you go to Flickr and then delete the, and delete the Creative Commons at the end of the, um, the URL. Right, we're all on Flickr. It's slow, isn't it? What do we want to search for? A picture of a? A sheep. Right, sheep, type in sheep in the search. It's just slow. Oh, goodness. Okay. So just delete. I'll oh, just do a search for sheep here. Write in sheep in the search box. Just yeah, just there. That's the search box. So you don't have to put uh, the Creative Commons in. Well, I'll show you how you do that. The, the way you search on most of these sites is to use filters. Oh, everywhere. You use filters. Yeah. Right, we've got lots of pictures of sheep. Right, but these pictures aren't all Creative Commons pictures. So how do we find... I'm going to go on to Flickr as well. Wait a second. Most of them are all Yep. Give us a sec. I'm going online. Uh, sheep. Right. Can you see at the top it says any license? Can you see it says any license? That's a filter. There's nothing being filtered at the moment. So we want to filter it. Open that and say, I want commercial use and mods allowed. Because that, that will give you the um, uh, attribution only license. Commercial use and mods allowed. Click on it. And it will come up with a different selection of sheep. <laughs> <laughs> I like that second one. Let's see. Let's click on the second one by... There we go. What a lovely sheep. I think it's a Welsh sheep. So if we click on the, the one of the sheep, yeah, the second one. There we go. Right. <clears throat> Can we see here that little symbol of a man? It says, some rights reserved. It's got a little symbol of a man there. Yeah. That's a Creative Commons licence. What I want you to do now is to click through on that and see what it says. If you click through on that, you'll come to Creative Commons website, and that's what the license is. It's attribution number two. They're actually on to attribution number four now, but Flickr offers attribution two only, and that's just you have the right to use it, but you have to say who it's by. So that's the license attached to it. Brilliant! We can use it! Wait, let's just check. Do, does it seem feasible that this guy, Steve P, 2008, created this picture? Yeah. It does seem quite feasible. I mean, you know, I don't think I've seen that picture of a sheep anywhere else before. It's probably him. Uh, under the picture, there's a little picture of a, of a guy. Here. Steve P, 2008. That's, that's the author. But you know what? I just want to find out who he really is. I just want to just investigate a bit. Let's click through onto Steve's page. Let's see, who is this guy? It's obviously a guy, probably a guy, he's called Steve. Oh, look at all his photos, isn't it nice? Um, let's see, does he have a real name? It'd be nice to use his real name. I'd like to know who he really is. Let's go to more, uh, profile. Oh, he lives in Burton-Pond-Trent. 
And he's taken, oh well, what a shame. <laughs> I don't know why they put that on Flickr. I'm male and taken. <laughs> um, okay, he hasn't got any other information on, on his profile, has he? He doesn't, what his name is, there's no, no full name, there's no website, there's no, like, blurb. Yeah? Okay, so why, am, why are we looking at this profile now? Why are we looking at him? Because we want to attribute the photo to him, then how can I do it? Exactly. We want to attribute the photo. We need to know who made the photo. It looks feasible that he took that photo of the sheep. Um, and he hasn't given us a proper name. He's released it under a Creative Commons license, but he hasn't got a proper name, so that's who made it. We're going to have to attribute it to Steve P. 2008. Okay, so that's the name that we will, we will use. And what we're going to do, there's so, much, there's so much I want to show you guys, but what we're going to do first is go back to the photo, back, uh, back, 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 back twice. Right, how are we going to use this photo? If, if we, yeah, click back. We need to download it, don't we? So let's download it. There's a download button right here. Uh, pick always the original size, the largest you can. Press that, it'll download to your download folder. Or however you're using it. Yeah, click on original, and it's going to download somehow. Yeah. So you've got, you have that photo now. Now, what I would like to do, but there isn't much time, I'm just going to tell you, when you start downloading stuff like this, you need to be organized, keep organized. So have a folder on your computer for found materials. Call it whatever you want, just you know, put it wherever you want, but for everywhere you find, some play, f find materials, like Flickr, have a folder, a Flickr folder. Right? And if you're, use, if you're finding things with different licenses, have license folders inside there. So Flickr CC BY, Creative Commons Attribution License. Put that in there, put that in the folder, and don't change the name. It'll be a long number, don't change the name. Why? Because the reason is because you don't want to lose it. If you, if you forget who is this photo by, oh my god, I have to find it and attribute it now, where the hell did I get it from? And you've changed the name to Sheep. <laughs> you're never, ever, ever, ever going to find it again unless you're really lucky. So don't change the name. Put it in a folder that you, you know, so you've got a record of where you found it. Do this right at the beginning. Don't wait until you've got a million photos on your computer. Okay? Keep organized. That's how you win in post production. We've got this photo. We know it's by someone called Steve. Are we just going to, you know, if you're really good, I don't actually do this, but <coughs> I should. What you should do, once you've downloaded it and you think, I'm going to use this now, how do I... <laughs> what you should do now is make a record. I'm going to show you a record that I made. And then I'll show you the video that it comes from in a minute. This is, this is the stuff that I recorded for all the found materials I used in a video. You could, you could do this. It's only an Excel form. It would be really good, helpful to you. But in some way, you need to keep a record, right? You need the, well, you don't need the file name because you're not changing it, right? But for your own records, you need the title of the photo. You need the author of the photo. You need to know where it's come from. The source URL. URL and a record of what the, um, the copyright is it, what license is it, what license is it. Now sometimes if you go and you click through on a photo and um, there'll be some blurb on the photo that says please contact me if you use my photo. You should honour that. You should honour anything that the author writes about his photo or on his profile. So this guy here, he wants to, he's released his um, his photo under a uh, by non-C, so attribution non-commercial license, and he wants to be contacted. So when I used it, I contacted him and said, it's just polite to do that. So these are the kind of records that 
you would look to make if you've been very good, because it's going to help you when you do your credits. And the credit is the attribution, is how you honour the licence, OK? Um, from this piece of paper, from this, I made a rolling list of credits for the, at the end of the video. Would you like to watch the video? Yes. It's a bit of fun, isn't it? A bit more fun. Um, if I can find the video, I will show it. You might have seen it already because, anyway. The Greek historian Plutarch said that education is not the filling of a vessel, but rather the handling of a planet. And that's really what we're trying to do here at the Canal of Earth Portal. Canal's new regional project set in the heart of Lynn, North Wales, uh, linking the universities of Aberystwyth, Bangor, Glyndwr, Group Language Lanai, and the Open University of Wales. The main aim of the website is to inspire people by showcasing educational opportunities that are out there. Um, one of the main ways we're going to do this is by promoting the creation of education and media. My name's Indy, um, and I'm the educational media producer at the Canal. One of my main jobs as a producer is to organise trainings for academics and staff who might want to make educational resources. So these trainings will educate people in how to use the kit that we provide and talk to people about style and give people ideas um, of where they might want to use um, these resources. So the Cadarm Learn Corporate Body is partners with a wide variety of video, audio, and equipment. Everything from a low end Lagria arm camcorder to light equipment. Um, green screens, podcasters, um, their sort of staff can produce all sorts of different products and products. Uh, I'm mainly an animator. I'll be um, creating animations for staff and I'm also going to be helping the staff um, create their own animations and videos for them. Uh, animations can help to visualise processes that would otherwise be very difficult to understand such as uh, muscular systems, tectonic plate movements, things like that. So a video could be a recording of events that then can happen again, or a document, or research that happens in our organization. Um, an audio recording could be used by a researcher to record a reflective journalist. A, a photo can be used to uh, get students asking questions. There's so many different ways of repeating so many different ways that um, you can use media in education. It's really about inspiring students and about enhancing the learning experience. And it's about widening access, both geographically and intellectually. Credits. Here we go. A lot of that was found at the National Screen and Sound Archive of Wales. And there were lots of things that I found to put in this video. And they're all credited here. It's long, isn't it? So you're crediting things twice. You show them yeah, exactly. And also credits while the clip is actually shown. Some of them. So the clips, some of the clips were copyright protected and I had to ask permission. And one of the things that uh, they asked, or that I suggested, was that I put a little a tag on it to say where it comes from because then other people can't just use it for free because that's released under Creative Commons license. Um, so I wanted to do that. Um, Oh yeah, yeah. So where you put your credits um, is an issue. So if you're if you're using a photo, you usually put the credit underneath the photo, or you could get away with putting it at the end of an article if you're doing a web page or something. 
um, with a video, you put it at the end in that rolling credits. If you're doing a podcast and you're using something like a sound effect in your podcast, uh, at the end, say, it's hailing. <laughs> at the end, say, um, all sound effects found on something, 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 you know. You do hear that on radio broadcasts, you know. Um, you have to credit at the, at the end. Um, writing a credit. There's information online on the Creative Commons website is the best place to go on how to write an attribution or a credit. Basically, basically, remember Tassel. The title, that's the title of this photo. The author, the source, where you got it from, the link that you got it from, and the license. You also need to honour any additional things that are put with the picture or with, you know, on the website of this guy. He said, he said, um, please put my website. If there's a credit, um, if there's a copyright notice on it, you have to honour that too. A copyright notice is when you see that C in a circle and it says C um, Joe, Joe Blogs. That's a copyright notice and you kind of have to put it there. Um, and you also need to say if you've made any changes to it. So if I, met, if I took this picture and I made the sky green, I'd say sky changed or something. I might ignore that bit. <laughs> Your basic, basic thing that you need to do is to say who it's by, where you got it from. Yeah? Attribution. Um, you probably all want to go for lunch now. Or would you like to practice doing a credit, an attribution? Right, the picture that you found, let's write a credit for that. So let's go back to where we found it. Uh, where is it? It's here. Right. It's got a title, it's called Sheep. <laughs> so if you can open a Word document or something similar, and... Um, the first thing, tassel, remember, the first thing, and let's pretend we're using this in an article, we're using this sheep, or in a video, we could use it in a video, we're just going to write the credit for the video. Sheep, actually it's a small, small uh, S, by, this, this photo sheep was by, what's his name again? Steve P, 2008, by Steve P, 2008. Um, so title, author, source, <coughs> copy the URL. You can make these shorter, you know. You can use URL shorteners to make it shorter. <coughs> or if you're online, you can just link to it. You can just do an underline link to the URL. Is it fine to use shorteners? Yeah, because it leads you to the same place. It should be a, yeah. yeah but, but then you're relying on a, on a third source, a third party that might go down or something. Uh, up to you. <laughs> Let's just copy this long URL. And that's going to be our source. My God. <laughs> Can we just take this stuff out? Just put the end. There we go. That's the number of the photo. Oh, he's now called Steve PJ 2009. I don't know what's going on. I'm going to try this shortened um, URL. Don't want a long URL. It's, it's the same photo. I just took all the rubbish at the end, off the end, and I, I, I stayed to where the number was, yeah, because the photo has a number, Flickr gives it a number, and that's the name of the file that you'll have downloaded. Oh, yeah, because all of that stuff afterwards is about your search. All that information, all the little letters and numbers after it is about your search. So you can get rid of all of that and just have the number. Um, as, so can you see my URL? Yeah. So that's and then and then you want the license. Oh, licensed under creative. I'm quite long form. There are shorter ways of doing this. You can go to the Creative Commons website and research. But Creative Commons attribution. Okay. And then I'm going to remember we click through to the link. I'm going to find that license. It is two, but you know, 
what do you want to write? It's up to you. And I'm going to give, I'm going to link forward to the license. Um, and then if it's a video, I would prepare my credits for a video in a Word document like this because it's easier to write it all out and then you just paste it into um, the credits title that you add to the end of your video. And I, I you know, make it look nice, put it in the middle kind of thing. <laughs> Where did you get the advice for the comments? Okay, so we went to the sheet, we, we were at the sheet and we, we clicked through to some rights reserved to the license and it opened another page on the Creative Commons site, and that's the license deed, and you just need to link to that. Did you see me, did you see how I did that? You just copy the URL, yeah. Um, the Creative Commons website also, you know, allows, um, it, it will do these credits for you. I've never tried that though. You could explore that. You could go to Creative Commons website and say, uh, do it for me, or put it, how do I put it together? I think it does it. I don't, I'm not sure how it does it for you. Um, yeah. So this is about doing your research. You, you know, you, you should be doing, if you're using stuff that's been, you've found on the internet, you need to do your own research as well. You know, you need to go and look, look up what Creative Commons means. And no, don't just take my word for it. Don't take anyone's word for it. Be untrusting. <laughs> I'd, I've told you that story about the clips that you saw in that video with a little um, information at the top that said from Blue Planet, from documentary. I found that on the Internet Archive and it had been released into the public domain. And it was kind of feasible. It was very good quality 2009 documentary. It was kind of feasible because it was made by the Smithsonian. Smithsonian um, which in the US, these organizations are all into you know, openness, openness of learning. So I thought, oh, maybe they did release it into the, into the wilderness. Um, but something in my little head said, nah, they wouldn't have done that. It's too good. So I contacted the Smithsonian. That's why you shouldn't trust. Um, I, I contacted the Smithsonian. They said, no, it wasn't. It's not in the public domain. Oh, there was also something at the beginning of the film that said, made for the people, or something like that. That, you know, it could have been feasible. But I got permission to use it anyway. So, um, so we've made a credit. We've made a credit. Is that, that's all we need to do. Any questions about, about that? You've got the title, you've got the author, you've got the source, where it's from, you've got the license, you haven't made any changes, there's nothing else on that photo that says you need to be worried about anything, that's it. And if you notice on my presentation, I uh, wonder who got one, this, this one for instance, um, I found that picture on Flickr, and even though actually he released that under a public domain license, I, I was still like, yeah, I'm still going to credit it, <laughs> just because it's polite. It's polite. Um, yeah. OK, so using these materials, it takes ages to look for them. But once you've got them, you've got them. <laughs> any, any questions? When you credit, yeah. how obvious does the credit have to be? Readable. It has to be there. Yeah, but what I mean is, what's the, what's the limit of that house where you can make that? Is there, is there your advice? Um, I've seen things that are credited that you can't read the credit, they're just tiny, tiny. Are they linked? Are they linkable? Can you link, can you click through? Yeah. That's okay then. I, I, I mean, I wouldn't do it, make it un unreadable. I would always, if I'm using a, on, on my website, I actually got a little, um, a little blog about, about, about this that I'll send you. Um, and uh, it's not out yet because we've only just got it translated, and I'll send it to you next week. Um, but my, uh, my colleague, Dan, who does all our computer stuff, he put it up for me, and he put the credit for the photo, which is a Banksy piece of Banksy graffiti, at the bottom. And I was like, no, I want to put it under the photo, so I still have to change things like that. 
and it was just like right at the bottom and it's kind of like invisible and like no let's credit this this photo properly so I want it to be clickable and I want everything there so that everyone can see it that's just what I want to do you've got to make your own decisions that's one thing people might find useful is to if you do see an image that you think the attribution looks a bit dodgy or something um, there's a quite useful website called Tin Eye which you've probably come across it's a reverse image lookup where you can take oh. the image into the put the, put the link to the image into Tin Eye click on it and it will come up with all the, any other versions of that same image on the web yay Tin eye like that. There we go. Wonderful. I didn't know about this. This is really useful, especially if you find something on Wikimedia Commons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. A very good resource. I'll keep that one. Anyone else? Um, no? Anyone want to get for lunch now? It, we've run out over. <laughs> um, would, you, would you mind coming back here at quarter to two? Quarter to two, long enough? Quarter, two. Yeah. quarter to two. So you've got a little over, little over 45 minutes. And then Russ will show you his video. Yeah.